it's very important to define, you know, terms and all of these. We all throw around terms and we don't define them enough. And part of this learning process for anybody who's a good peace activist or a good conflict resolver is that you got to define what you're talking about. What do you mean by culture? You know, what do you mean by respect? Because respect for one person is not the same as respect for another. Well, it's the same with religion. When I say religion, I'm usually referring to spiritual wisdom that comes out of religious texts and traditions, which is very different than what's called technically organized religion or the structures of religious organizing of large body, bodies of human beings. So on balance, there's two issues where religion can be destructive and has been historically. One is that uh, uh, there are just as many religious texts that are can be used for hate or destruction or violence as there are that can be used for positive relationships. And one of the defining differences between them is what I call the scope of ethics. Unfortunately, a lot of religious systems have wonderful ethics for a very limited group of people. The people who are saved, the people who are, who are doing exactly what they're supposed to do according to some narrow set of religious rules, uh, family people who have the right nuclear family, or people who observe all the rituals that the church or the group wants them to observe, then the ethics are wonderful. But the problem is that's a very narrow scope of the universe. And where religions get into trouble is that, that, that those, those, um, those ethical values, no matter how much it's stated that they're universal, become very tribal. And that beyond that scope, it, it, it can get all the way from indifference to horror and genocide, because everything outside can be labeled evil. And even that is not enough. They have to, it has to be evil, and there has to be the willingness to conquer evil through violence. And then religions can become very, very destructive. And the other aspect of religion that can be very destructive is that religion is power. It's power over a lot of people. It's an organized enthusiasm and passion for something. And any time you have an organized body of people who are passionate about something, there's always a political or military or economic authority that wants to utilize that for its purposes. So historically speaking, the most destructive aspect of religion is actually a secular thing, which is secular power. So today, um, even though there are problematic texts in every one of the religious traditions, in all my 27 years of experience, none of those texts by themselves actually cause the violence. Those are problematic texts, whether they be about, oh, most people not being saved or going to hell or jihad or holy war. All of these things are there. They don't cause most of the violence. What causes most of the violence are states that, that see a convenient tool in organized religion as a way to create a weapon. So the weaponization of religion, and particularly poor people, uh, but really any damaged people, uh, is, is the biggest uh, challenge that we have. So whether it be um, the United States and Saudi that uh, in, a, in their war with the Soviets in the, in the 70s saw the necessity uh, from a strategic point of view of creating uh, madrasas in Pakistan to, uh, to uh, train people to kill the Soviets, or um, the Saudi conflict uh, with the Iranians uh, of the Sunni versus Shiite or Wahhabi versus Shiite divide that became very, very serious already in the 70s, uh, whether it be um, the, the secular um, Jewish Israelis who saw the opportunity to um, shore up a, um, a fight with the Arabs through mobilizing hundreds of thousands, then millions of uh, Orthodox Jews to embrace on a religious level the, uh, the territories and to hold on to them. All of these secular states unleashed a genie of religious enthusiasm for, for uh, fighting. And history shows that, that whether it be today, whether it be the United States where Christianity is used as a passion to confront things in the Middle East and confront Muslims, 
or whether it was a thousand years ago with the Crusades, where where rulers in Europe saw this as an opportunity to conquer, it has always led to massive bloodshed. That's why states together with a religious enthusiasm is one of the most deadly things in history. And that's why so many wise people over the last really thousand years have struggled each in their own way to try and separate religion and power. That, that religion is better off without power, that religion has greater integrity with less power, and it has less integrity with more power.